G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, this is probably the biggest story going around at the moment. Exchanges running out of ETH with reserves plunging 27% in 48 hours. All right, now, Alex Saunders uh, from Nuggets News, he put out a tweet. This is very, very interesting. Exchanges could be out of ETH within 48 hours. Demand has skyrocketed. Exchange reserves fell 20% from 10 million to 8 million in the last few hours, with targets of 5K, 10K, and 20K long term. I doubt many hodlers will sell their ETH in the 1 to 2K range. Uh, I would completely agree. I'm not uh, selling any uh, at that kind of price. But look, in saying that, if ETH does kind of, you know, make some moves fairly quick, while people might not really be selling their ETH, people will start to trade some of it though. But it is very interesting that, you know, there's only 8 million ETH uh, left on the exchanges and it went from 10 million to 8 million uh, in a very quick fashion. So, you know, if ETH starts to move, then the FOMO sort of starts if it hasn't already started. Uh, and then that could be snapped up pretty quick. And yeah, again, off. Depending on where we are, I wouldn't even think about selling my ETH at 5K. But look, if we're 5K in September, August, September, then I'm probably going to start to, you know, at least start to slowly uh, take my, uh, take some profits there. But if we're 5K in May or March, no, I won't be selling at all. Uh, I'd definitely be thinking more 10 to sort of 20K. Uh, but very, very interesting. I mean, you know, but they're talking about, uh, you know, Bitcoin having a liquidity crisis. There was only, you know, 2 million uh, Bitcoin available on the exchanges. Well, it seems Ethereum's not too far behind. And what we need to remember is Ethereum, it's a whole lot cheaper. And so particularly newbies in that who just don't understand how it works, you know, they're going to buy Ethereum because it's cheaper. They're going to go looking for the cheaper stuff. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that Ethereum's bad because it's cheaper, but that's why it will uh, sell quite quickly. Institutional buyers will start to get into Ethereum and they already sort of slowly are. So yeah, watch this space. Uh, Ethereum could move very, very quickly. But look, we have to have a look at the markets. Uh, they have uh, you know, turned around somewhat slightly and we'll get onto that shortly. But yeah, if you know... If it runs out, so what was he saying here? Uh, exchanges could be out of ETH within 48 hours. Now I'd say that was just because uh, a lot of people bought into it uh, on the pullback, uh, much like Bitcoin. As it starts to rise in price, uh, you know, it'll probably likely slow down. So I don't think we'll chew up uh, that 8 million, but look, half of that may go. Uh, and, you know, of course, it's still being uh, mined on a daily basis as well. So keep an eye out for the ETH price. Could uh, make some big moves. Now, so we know that there's a lot of uh, IPOs happening at the moment. Um, Coinbase is going to do one. You know, Ripple were at least looking at doing one, whether they still will or not. Uh, is you know a different question, but now uh, the backed also doing one. So Winklevoss's Gemini is reportedly considering uh, doing uh, going public as well. And look, I think they're all going to do it. I, I think you know again it takes one to do it, uh, and then if it's successful, everybody else will follow suit. You know, like Michael Saylor buying Bitcoin, you take one to do it. Uh, and then there was a whole stack of people following suit. And it's going to just continue to get bigger as well. You know, we, we haven't heard the last of that. Uh, and again, you know, if there's only 2 million Bitcoin left on the exchanges, which is, you know, what's been reported, eventually they're going to have to start buying uh, from the exchanges because, uh, you know, places like Grayscale, PayPal and that, they're buying up all the freshly mined stuff from the miners. So they will have to go to the exchanges. There'll be nowhere else to go. And look, it'll be much the same with Ethereum and that as well. But I think this, uh, you know, any big exchange is going to do the same. You know, Binance will probably do the same, uh, whether they can get listed uh, on, you know, an American uh, exchange or not. I don't know. They might have to look elsewhere. But yeah, I, I would not be surprised if we see multiple uh, IPOs like this happening. Um, yeah. Watch this space. Now, over here, so Tether's offshore bank, uh, you know, there's so much talk about, you know, if Tether goes under, 
will there be a big crash in Bitcoin and all the rest of it? And I guess it's whether Tether really have the uh, securities to back up, you know, well, the funds to back up uh, all the Tether that they've printed. And so over here it says, so uh, Deltec, the Bahamas-based bank that holds reserves for stablecoin issuer Tether, stated today that it has a large position in Bitcoin. Chief Investment Officer Hugo Rogers, in a 2020 review video uh, of Deltex Holdings, uh, it also includes a large position in Bitcoin, which has received a lot of attention recently. We bought Bitcoin for our clients at about 9,300, so that worked very well. Although 2020, uh, sorry, very well through 2020, and we expect it to work well in 2021 as the liquidity, liquidity crisis continues to run hot. So yeah, look, if they got a whole stack of Bitcoin at 9,300, they really will be cheering. Now, the issue is you go right down to the bottom of it and it says, uh, where is it? Uh, I think I've lost it already. Yep, I lost it. But basically it says that's all good now if they've got all this Bitcoin, but simply holding Bitcoin uh, and they continue to print Tether if it's not, you know, the one for one uh, dollar pegged, uh, Again, it might be now because Bitcoin's risen so much, but what happens when there's a, a big sell-off and all the rest of it, when the next bear market comes? Then even they would have to sell off Bitcoin to you know, match that. So yeah, Tethers, uh, again, it's one of the hottest stories at the moment. We're all waiting to see what happens. You know, the, the, you know, the SEC and all the rest of it seem to be you know, trying to really crack down. And I agree, we need regulation and to get rid of you know, rogue players. But you know, we don't have evidence that Tether... Uh, uh, one of the rogue players yet, but you know, there's been some definite suspicious sort of things happen. Uh, you know, when Tether really starts to print, then Bitcoin really starts to print. So whether they've you know printed sort of fake money and issued it to people, and you know bought Bitcoin themselves uh, with this fake money that was never backed by anything, uh, will be interesting to see. And you know, I feel sorry for them uh, should that be the case and they get caught out. But in saying that, I feel sorry for everyone in the crypto space because that could mean uh, it could be quite an issue and a hefty uh, retracement. But, you know, fingers crossed that's not the case. Now, look, we go over here. So one, uh, sorry, Oak Tree Capital Chairman warms up to crypto. Thankfully, his son owns enough Bitcoin for the family. All right, so Oak Tree Capital co-founder Mark uh, Howard Marks is warming up to cryptocurrency. Once a crypto skeptic, he, he now says, thankfully, his son is quite positive on Bitcoin and owns a meaningful amount for our family. So we can go down here and it says, in the case of cryptocurrencies, I probably allowed my pattern recognition around financial innovation and speculative, speculative market behavior, along with my natural conservatism, to produce my skeptical position, he explained. These things have kept Oak Tree and me out of trouble many times, but they probably don't help me think through innovation. And that is, it's the old mindset. Uh, and, and look, it happens to most people. As you get older, you just kind of get set in your ways. And, you know, again, you've had a, a lot of, you know, things happen in your life where you've th seen things that look like they were po uh, going to be positive and too good to be true, and they turned out to be that. Uh, but then when something does come along uh, that is that good, you're very... Uh, hesitant to get on board and you just think it's fake and you, you, you know you need to see a whole lot of proof that uh, it's legit before you'll even go near it and that's what it is with Bitcoin a lot of these people have been around for a long time they've seen a lot of things and they've seen you know a million things that are going to be the next big thing and they weren't and they were fake and they were crap and they're a scam so of course they're going to be hesitant towards Bitcoin but the problem is once you become like that you shut yourself off uh, to like you said uh, being able to see new innovation and all the rest of it. You have to try and keep an open mind or you will miss the next big thing. And that is generally what happens to, you know, who were once considered, you know, all-time best investors like Warren Buffett, you know, great investor and you, know, you can't throw shade at him. But geez, he's missed some stuff. Uh, missed on Facebook, I'm pretty sure. Missed on Amazon, uh, you know, has missed on Bitcoin. Uh, and it's because he just hasn't been able to keep up with stuff like that. And he was never able to get on board with tech. That's not to say he hasn't done well, though. He's the you know greatest investor uh, of possibly all time at the moment. But he has missed the Bitcoin train. Uh, and I would say someone who comes through and invests in Bitcoin, uh, Michael Saylor possibly, uh, will go down as one of the greatest investors of this next generation. But likewise, he may not be able to see past anything other than Bitcoin. 
Uh, I was just watching a, an interview with Chamath Palipataya. I hope I haven't completely butchered that before. Uh, and he was, I think it was with Wendy Lee. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, but uh, he was being interviewed and they was asked about uh, other cryptocurrencies and things like Ethereum. And he basically just fobbed him off and said, no, he doesn't believe in any of them. Uh, look, he could be right. He's a very intelligent guy. There's no doubt about it. But I think he might be sort of slightly in that thing where he just can't see past, uh, you know, his biases. And look, I've been there. There's cryptocurrencies I like and I don't like. And, you know, some of the ones I don't like, I don't even know much about them, but I just don't like them. Uh, but that is a limitation and I'm trying to get past that and I want to be able to at least be open and you know do research for myself before I just shut things off and that is where uh, Mr. Marx is right now but as he says here uh, he is thankful that his son owns a meaningful amount for the family so his son was able to get in and buy some Bitcoin obviously at a good price and possibly early on uh, and it's enough to you know make up for his uh, inability to you know see past his own biases and things and keep up with the times you know I'm sure well I'm gonna I hope not but it will probably happen to me at some stage too it took me quite a while to get into cryptocurrencies I had a friend telling me about it for months and I just kept saying no it's fake and it's crap and it's rubbish until you know months later this was about April 2016 my mate was telling me about it and I was just like no nah, it's garbage it's rubbish didn't want to hear about it then started to you know pay more attention to him in around about September 2017. Did you know plenty of research and then got in and have been you know hooked ever since. But all right, let's go back to the Bitcoin chart. Or well, not back to. Let's go to it. So what I'm noticing here is that at the moment this has set a lower high. So I am concerned. Everyone you know, including myself, we got happy that this rallied back up. But now the weekend's here. This could roll over and we go lower. And this could just be a drawn out retracement. Sorry, I moved this. It's like, excuse me, I get this. So this is what we could be looking at. I'll get rid of the green. We don't want this to be green. Well, yeah, we can. If we break out kind of above this, then, you know, it's good it's breaking out to the upside. But at the moment, this is on a downward trend. Uh, and again, it is Friday here in Australia. So, you know, we're waiting for the retracement, uh, the weekend retracement that generally comes. So really, we need to break above this green line and stay above this green line, or we are actually in a downtrend. And look, it really needs to come above 41000 uh, $911. That's what I've got here on the Bitstamp chart. If we can't get above that and stay above that, uh, again, anything less means we're still setting lower highs. Yes, these were higher highs for a minute, but this could be a bit of a fake out. So we break down, or a, a sucker's relief rally is what they call it sometimes. So we break down, and everyone gets worried. It pumps back up. Everyone gets euphoric again. Yes, uh, we broke in the bear trend, but then it just rolls over and continues to go lower. And look, this could be something that plays out over a matter of uh, you know a week or two, or maybe even a couple of months. That's what's happened previously. Now, I don't want to tr uh, throw FUD out there and say that is what's going to happen, but at the moment, that's what it's showing. So we just have to keep an eye out. Over this weekend, uh, quite possible we get a sell-off. And look, if we get a day a sell-off, again, it generally happens somewhere over the weekend. So Friday, Saturday, even sometimes on the Sunday. And it, you know, it can start anywhere from the Wednesday night slash Thursday morning and go right through to sort of the Monday morning. There's no exact science to it. But, you know, is this maybe the weekend sell-off then? And, you know, come Saturday uh, and Sunday, it all starts to pump back up. We'll just have to wait and see. But that is something I'm keeping my eye on at the moment because this is still a lower high. We need to get up here and break this and it not be a fake out because, again, it could break out and then just roll over and we still go back lower. They're things that we constantly need to keep our, keep our eye on. That's why I didn't dump all my cash reserves into Bitcoin when it dropped down to sort of 32000 I picked it up. I was pretty happy with that. But just in case we go lower, I want to still have cash reserves on the side. Now, you know, based on the news and everything that's happening, and there's always more people coming out and buying more Bitcoin, uh, and it's getting low in places, uh, I do expect the price to continue to go up, but that's no guarantee. This uh, is slightly bearish at the moment. All right, last but not least, let's go and have a look at the market cap. Now, this needs to be refreshed. It's been here for a while, but we were 
over a trillion dollar market cap again which was good so let's see how we're going so it was one trillion and 38 there we there we go it's going up but look Bitcoin uh, is slowly going down a little bit uh, and has been going down for the last week so that's what we need to keep in mind so we are actually in a somewhat uh, bearish trend at the moment but that doesn't mean nothing's performing well but if Bitcoin continues to make lower highs uh, this could be something that might play out you know for a little bit longer because again for the last seven days Bitcoin has been going down uh, it's had rallies where it comes back but it hasn't broken that old all-time high and it could be just a very slow burn where we keep uh, dumping uh, and pumping back but not breaking the old high uh, so again something we'll have to wait and see Bitcoin dominance has broken though and again Ethereum uh, is starting to push up and look if maybe Ethereum's about to have a big breakout uh, considering you know we might run out of ETH in 48 hours but we'll have to wait and see because again this could be just part of a bigger sell-off that happens over a more prolonged kind of period and look it might not uh, it might uh, be all finished by tonight or tomorrow and then it just goes back to the way it was but we'll just have to wait and see keep our minds open ETH gas price is still too high god I can't wait for you know layer two solutions uh, you know side chains and all the rest of it to you know just be more mainstream because it really is hard to use Ethereum at the moment unless you've got a lot of skin in the game if you don't yeah, you just can't do it like particular uh, Kyber network love Kyber network I get paid in ETH I'm all for it I don't have that much Kyber network though uh, and basically any returns that I'm making they are all you know other than when ETH gas prices are in the single digits they just get chewed up uh, in gas fees uh, when I get the returns I get a very very small return basically not really worth it I, you know I'm not I'm not making enough so for me the layer two solutions can't come quick enough and gas fees are too high let's have a look though big movers what's really pumped well there we go voyager token i mean that is just on a rip tear that really is doing well you know 230 percent in seven days uh you know for things that have just pumped for so long and haven't had retracements just be mindful that things like that they won't last forever there is going to be some kind of pullback so you know now might be a good to take might be a good time to take some profits unless you're just looking really long term you know like I the end of this bull run or 10 15 years down the track or whatever it may be then don't worry about it again you got to work out your own strategy in your own system but for me if I was in Voyager and it had gone 230 percent in seven days I would definitely be taking some profits not necessarily you know all my investment back or anything like that but I'd just take some profit so when the retracement comes and it will I'll have some money to buy back in at a cheaper price again but that's how I do it and nothing I provide uh, none of the information I provide is financial advice I'm not a financial uh, service provider I'm not licensed or anything like that personal opinion only all right last but not least what about dumps are there any big dumps yep block stack again they had a really good pump so there was always going to be a pullback uh, verge but really look single digit pullbacks they're not too bad and again block stack you know they pumped 200 and something uh, plus percent since I got in uh, and again I've got my money back ready from block stack uh, so of course there's going to be uh, a retracement that's you know to be expected uh, the graph unfortunately uh, keeps going down a little bit but it's not down uh, as far as what it was uh, I was unlucky I got into the graph uh, what was kind of a peak high I guess and it pulled back 28% uh, I think and now I think I'm sitting at around about you know maybe 5 or 10% loss from where I get in but I'm more in the graph uh, for the long term than the short term it wasn't like a quick flip I like what the graphs about and what they're doing so yeah losses not too bad gains nothing really sort of uh, too out there and crazy again except for Voyager taken they're doing really well uh, and these other ones they're pretty good I mean IOST geez 160 uh, percent in seven days uh, the 24-hour stuff yeah it looks some good gains double digits but again nothing sort of crazy other than Voyager 50 percent uh, in 24 hours and still climbing uh, it'll be interesting to see just how high that can go all right well that's it from me uh, like I said 
you know the weekend is here we really do need to see Bitcoin you know break above this you know, a green line to you know stay bullish because uh, if this roll rolls over and goes back down to here and then you know pumps back up but then rolls over before here this might be the indication that we're in for a longer term correction uh, and again that will generally set some panic in uh, and that might create might create a steeper correction but I really don't see it going much down you know if we got down to 24,000 uh, I would be very surprised I'd be thinking something more around about here again the kind of thirty thousand dollar mark this is where it got bought up pretty quickly last time you know thirty thousand thirty two thousand uh, and if it does get back down to those prices again the cash I have sitting on the side I'm going to put half into Bitcoin straight away not all of it though because if it goes down to you know twenty eight thousand then I'm going to put half my cash in again but I'm always going to have cash sitting on the side just in case it goes lower this is a bull market in a bear market the strategy changes and you know I basically just you know sell when I think we're in a bull market from what I'm happy to sell you know take the profits uh, that I haven't yet taken because I should have already taken some by then you don't buy the dip in a bear market in a bear market you wait for a bottoming out uh, period again you know it's it's not just going to be something that uh, bounces it's got to be something where it you know travels sideways generally for at least you know a couple of weeks maybe even a couple of months not exactly sideways but you know imagine something sort of like this uh, and these were more monthly or weekly candles or something that's a bottoming out uh, there and again you know maybe that you know one big low where this would have been the ultimate price to get in and then it bottoms out and then it slowly starts to make its way back up that's what I'll be looking for all right that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another Click that like, subscribe button and the bell icon for all. Get my uh, uh, notifications. I'll do daily updates and all the rest of it. Hopefully you're on that gain train, although, you know, the altcoins, there's gain trains, definitely. Uh, Bitcoin's uh, retracing a little bit. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.